Lesson 47 is measurement conversions, and part one is what we will focus on today. That is the types of measurements. Go ahead and get your notes ready. Push play when you are ready to begin. So let's start with what these measurement systems are. And we're going to focus on two types of measurement systems today. Uh, the metric system is the type of measurements that most other places, most other countries use. Um, in Europe, they use the metric system. And in, um, well, I don't know where else. China, they probably use the metric system. I don't know. Um, I just know that we generally don't use it but we should be familiar with it. So we're going to get ourselves familiar with it. Get your notes ready by having this information and then these um, little spaces here. And um, we'll copy down as I go. If I'm measuring in the metric system length, how far something is or how tall something is, I would use a meter. And a meter is about the size of what you're familiar with as a yard. Those yard sticks in my room, those are very, very close to the size of a meter. If I measure something in uh, measuring mass, it's sort of like, it's like how much makes something up. You would relate it to the idea of, of weight, even though it doesn't really mean weight. Um, how much mass is packed into something will determine how much it weighs. So they're very closely related items. So mass is measured in grams. And capacity is how much something will hold, like a swimming pool or um, a spoon, how much liquid can be held in there, how much something can hold. And that is measured in liters. So in the metric system, they have used um, the base unit in every one of their um, explanations and then they just put a prefix a little a couple of letters in front of their base unit to tell you how it's chopped up or how many of them there are so you just need to know length means meter gram means mass like the, how much it weighs sort of and liter means capacity how much it can hold how much liquid can be held in there so um, let's look at how those those are broken down we're going to be looking at some of the fractional units of these measurement systems, the meter and stuff, and how those relate to other things. Go ahead and break the length section into four rows. Okay, and on the third row, not the first, not the second, but on the third row, go ahead and put meter. That's the base unit here, so I put it there. The abbreviation is an M, and it's about the width of a door. So if you look at the classroom door, how wide it is, is about one meter. A kilometer, kilo means a thousand. So a kilometer is 1,000 meters, and it's abbreviated KM. So if I laid down a meter stick and I put down 1,000 of them, it would stretch out a long way. It would stretch out about the length of 10 football fields, 10 football fields. That's a long way. And now a centimeter. This is a fractional unit of the meter. What I mean by that is that you're taking that meter and you're chopping it up into even pieces. So it's going to be smaller than the meter because it's chopped up. And a centi, um, if you think of the word century or percent, you know that the base word cent means 100. So the centimeter is the meter chopped up into 100 equal pieces. So if I took that meter stick, the width of the door, and I chopped it into 100 equal pieces, it probably would, um, and you'd end up with um, each of those fractional pieces being the width of your pinky. So look at your pinky finger, and about the width of it, not the length of it, but the width of it, is about the size of a centimeter. All right, and another fractional piece of the meter is the millimeter. And I say milli like the small voice because millis are tiny. Milli means thousand, actually. And so uh, the millimeter is a meter chopped into 1,000 little pieces. It's a fractional piece of the meter, and it's cut into 1,000 equal pieces. That's a lot. So if I took the meter stick, the width of the door, and I chopped it up into 1,000 equal pieces, one of those little pieces would be about
about the thickness of a dime. So if I took a dime and just looked at the side of it, as thick as it was from the very bottom of it to the very top of it is hardly any, right? It's so thin. Um, that's about a millimeter. Super, super tiny. Millimeter! They're so cute. Now I want you to um, get the gram section, the mass section, split into three lines. And we'll talk about the pieces of the gram. We'll start with the base unit again here. Up here we started with the base unit meter. Here we're starting with the base unit of a gram. And the gram is the mass of a small paper clip. So if you had a, a little paper clip, the little metal squiggly things that you put to hold two pieces of paper together, um, that's a paper clip. If you held one of those in your hand, that weighs or that has a mass of a gram, pretty close to a gram. So if you're wondering how much a gram is, how much that weighs or how much the mass of it is, that's how much we're talking about. A kilogram, kilo means a thousand, and so it's a multiple, not a fractional, but a multiple of the gram. It's a thousand grams. Kilogram is kg, and it's about comparable to the mass of a textbook. So if you lifted up a textbook and felt how that felt, that would be about a kilogram. So that math textbook in the front of the classroom, if you lifted that and felt it, it would be about a kilogram, 1,000 grams. And finally, the fractional piece of the gram, if you chop that gram, the small paper clip, up into a 1,000 tiny pieces, you would have a milligram, milli being the fractional piece of a whole gram. It's cut up into even pieces. And in this case, milli, of course, by now you know, means a thousand. So this gram is chopped up into a thousand tiny, tiny, tiny pieces. The mass of a milligram would be about the mass of one single little grain of sand. Not a handful of sand, not a couple of pieces of sand, one little grain of sand. Now let's look at capacity, how much something will hold. The, the um, base unit here is the liter, or it's abbreviated with an L. And that would be the amount of water in a large water bottle. So if you carry a large water bottle around, it may be close to a liter of water in there. And you can look on the side and it'll tell you how many liters or milliliters or whatever are in there. But a liter would be a large water bottle that somebody might carry around to drink water out of. A kiloliter, kilo meaning a thousand, it's a multiple of the liters, um, it's a thousand liters, kiloliter, so that would be a thousand large water bottles, so that's quite a bit. It would be about the same as two large refrigerators filled up with water or liquid. So a kiloliter is the amount, the capacity of two large refrigerators. That's a lot. And a milliliter, again milli is the fractional piece of the liter, meaning that if you cut the liter into equal pieces, um, you'd get the milliliter if you cut it into a thousand equal pieces. Milliliters are tiny. It is the amount of liquid in an eyedropper, like the little things that you might drop um, into your eyes, one drop of drop into your eyes, that's a milliliter. So that amount of liquid in a drop, that's a milliliter. So it's very, very little bit of water. So if you were really thirsty, you would not want a milliliter of water. It would not be enough. You'd be wanting more water. A liter would be plenty. You would not want a kiloliter. You would float away because you can't drink that much water. You would be sick. So um, milliliter, tiny amount of water. So for the purposes of today, I would just be um, asking you things like, um, how would you measure the length of a car? Well, you would go to length and you would look at your choices. Do you want to measure it in thickness, how thick a dime it is and count dimes? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all along the length of the car. That would take forever. How about centimeters, the width of your pinky? Do you want to count down that car in pinkies? One, two, three, four, five, six. That would take forever. A meter stick that's about the width of the door? One, two, three, four. That wouldn't be so bad on a car. Would you measure it in kilometer? Uh, that car is going to be nowhere near 10 football fields. So your answer would be the best way to measure the length of a car is in 
meter. So you just have to use your reasoning on which choice would I make if I had to measure that out, which choice would I make? If I had to measure the um, amount of dosage of a cough syrup, that's capacity, how much cough syrup do I take? Well, I am not drinking two large refrigeratorfuls of cough syrup, am I? And I am not drinking a water bottle full of cough syrup either. I'll have a couple of eyedroppers of uh, size of cough medicine, so that would be in milliliter. So that's all you're going to be asked is what's the best way to measure this or that. And, um, and so you'll have to do that for the metric system. And you'll just use your notes that you have here to help kind of guide you and your teammates to help guide you on which one you would use. Now let's look at the customary measurement system, which is what we use in the United States. Um, and a lot of other countries do not use this one, but this is what we're comfortable with. This one should be a little bit easier for you to understand. All right, let's look at the customary measurement system. Go ahead and draw this chart out. Customary measurement system is what we use in the U.S. for length, for weight, and for capacity. And each section needs three lines. So go ahead and get that drawn out like I have it and push play when you're ready to do this. All right, our first measurement is for length. Length is what we use to measure how far something is, how long it is, how tall it is. Length is what we'd use. And one of the measurements we'd use is an inch. You're very familiar with that. It's the length of a small paper clip. Some of you know that's kind of around the length from your knuckle to the tip of your finger or from your knuckle to your knuckle on your um, finger. So an inch, you've worked with inches a lot, so you're already familiar with the length of an inch. The next measurement in length is a little bit bigger. It's the foot, and that's like the length of a piece of paper. If you took one of the pieces of lined paper, the paper you're writing on right now, from top to bottom, that's about a foot tall, or that's about a foot in length. So um, again, foot is something you're already familiar with. There's 12 inches in a foot, you know that already. Um, so a foot is the length of a piece of paper. And finally, the mile. The mile um, is the length of 18 football fields. So that's quite a long way. It's a little longer even than the uh, kilometer, which was only 10 football fields. So 18 football fields, um, if you wanted to run a mile, you'd have to run the, the length of 18 football fields. For you um, to understand a mile, if I were to run from the front of the high school um, all the way down to the wellness center over at the community center, that's a mile. Okay, an ounce for weight, we're now in weight, how much something weighs. An ounce, we abbreviate as Oz, O-Z, Oz, an ounce, Oz, is the weight of a slice of bread. So if you took one slice of bread out of the bread bag and you held on to that, that would be about the weight of one ounce, not very much. A pound, we abbreviate that as LB, ulb, uh, uh, because a uh, pound in Spanish is libras, and so we've just adopted that abbreviation. Pound, we pronounce, or we abbreviate as LB, um, would be about the weight of three apples. So three apples, hold three apples in your hand, that's about a pound, one pound. And finally, a large weight measurement is a ton. Um, and there's no abbreviation for ton that I'm aware of because it's a small enough word. Um, that would be like the weight of a big buffalo, a big animal. So um, that would be pretty heavy, a big truck maybe. Um, a ton is very, very heavy. You don't want to be smushed under a ton. That would be bad. And now we'll talk about capacity. Again, that's how much liquid something can hold or how much something can hold. And we'll start with the fluid ounce, the smallest one. Fluid ounce is as, um, abbreviated as full oz, full oz, F-L-O-Z. Uh, F-L for fluid, uh, O-Z for ounce, full oz. And that would be about um, the size of two tablespoons. So if you had like two large spoons that you might get out of the drawer, two of those, um, the amount of water in two of those would be about a fluid ounce. Okay. Uh, the next measurement for capacity is a cup. Um, you've probably used a cup to measure things when you are um, cooking. Um, so the cup size is the biggest of those measuring cups that you use, and then they have the fractional pieces of it, the half a cup, the three-quarter cup, the one-quarter cup, all that. Um, one cup would be about the size of a small cup of water, one of those little kitty cups of water. Um, 
you know, if you give the little kitty cup to a kid with the little handles on it, um, that's about a cup of uh, liquid. So a capacity of a cup is one of those little small cups of water. And finally, a gallon, um, and a gallon is abbreviated as gal. And um, a gallon would be those large milk jugs that you buy at the store, the big ones with the little handle on it, and you can see the milk through the plastic. That's a gallon, so um, a gallon is that much. So um, these are the customary measurement systems that you would want to be familiar with. Um, and so I'll be asking you things like, um, how would you measure the length of a rug? Let's say a little rug you would put on your kitchen floor. Would you want to measure it? And that's a length. The length of something would be one of these up here. Would you measure it in inches, which is the length of uh, small paper clips? Would you take paper clips? One, two, three, four, five, six. That'd be tedious. That would be not fun. A foot, the length of your piece of paper. One, two, three, four. That wouldn't be so bad. It's a small rug, not a big rug. Or would you measure it in mile compared to 18 football fields? Well, that would be ridiculous because it's tiny compared to 18 football fields. So your answer would be, well, I would measure the area rug, a little rug, in terms of a foot. So you'll be asked questions like that, and you'll have to reason through what would you use to measure it. If it's a length item, think of what the lengths are. If it's a weight item, think about what the weights are. And if it's a capacity, how much it can hold, think about what the capacity items are. So go ahead and use these notes to help you with your closure questions and uh, see me if you need any assistance. You could also work with a partner on your closure today just to reason things out. All right, good luck to you.